Okay, welcome to the Monday, October 21st, 2019 meeting of the Montpelier Design and Review Committee. I'll let staff and members introduce themselves. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett. Eric Gilbertson. Seth Mitchell. And unless anybody has anything else ahead of time, do I hear a, an approval of the agenda? I want to add one thing, a quick report on where the design review regs are. Okay. We can put that in we other can, business. We can do that I'll under do other, that on the bottom. Other business. Yeah. So awesome. with that change, or I with it. that notation, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor of the agenda? We'll go straight forward to the first application, 89 Main Street, for Native Real Estate applicant Marigold Adornman. That you come forward to have a seat at the table. And I'm just going to ask that whoever's talking try and make sure that microphone is pointed pretty much right at them. Um, <laughs> just because it's that one is very sensitive. These are more like these are broader. Sure. Is this? Yeah. Good. That should be good. And describe your application for the sign. Sure. We uh, have been in business there for two years, and we have signs on the front at the corner of the building where the signs are on the top of city center mm -hmm. but our entrance unlike all the other businesses is actually on the side of east state street and for two years we've realized that customers will park in front of that entrance and then walk around to main street and not know where to go so we are trying to have something that lets them know that that's our doorway um, so we decided on a vertical um, sign as you see in the picture there, and I uh, made a cardboard mock-up to hold up in the picture. Okay. Um, to uh, let them know where our side entrance is. And uh, there's existing light boxes from when Village Pizza had their sign and awning sign. Mm -hmm. um, and that those existing light boxes are, are what would be used to uh, illuminate the vertical sign that's described there. Now on this, it, does it say tattoo on both sides or tattoo on one and piercing on it the other? It says tattoo on one and piercing on the other. Um, it was a way for us to keep the um, sign smaller without trying to put both words on both sides. The um, font and design is the same as the existing sign that we have on the front in the row of placard signs. Is the face of brick and the sign band in the same plane, or is it different? In other words, are your arms going to be different sizes due to the relationship of the planes? Um, you mean, is the bottom bracket going to need a different offset than the top bracket? They appear to be the same to me. Okay. Yeah. How tall are the letters in the sign? Um, I believe that they're in the measurements from the sign design. Um, he worked out the actual design in order to keep it under the. Um, yeah, I think we have. Measurements. I think the we have the total height. We don't have the height of the individual letters. But we've got, you know, sign height total of 56.5 for total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in piercing. So that's roughly five inches, right? 56 divided by eight. Three, four, five, six. That's tattoo. Yep. The other one's piercing, which is eight. Ten inches. The piercing would be on the side facing up East State Street. Uh, correct. And, and the tattoo ta facing the intersection of State and Main? Correct. Okay. Mm, so so tattoo is one, two, three, four, five, six. But the total sign is 56.5, so the whole yes. thing is probably less, so that's less than, that's like nine inches. Six times nine is 54. Do you know what the distance nine is? Nine or less. Distance is from the, the edge of the doorway there out to the edge of the building and the sidewalk? I do not know the distance from the doorway to the corner of the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. The um, individual letter height um, is also, there's the, our name at the bottom, Mar Marigold Adornment, and then also the border. 
so the the overall height of the sign is actually um, yeah, it's, it's, it's considerably um, almost a full letter's height, probably taller than the letters. Yeah. And do you know how tall the sign van is here? Um, top to bottom. The sign ban, I, I believe, was approximately three feet. That's what our other existing sign and all the signs that are um, on the front of city center buildings. That there's like a row of um, matching sized for artisans' right. hand. Probably Labrioche. six inch reveal on there would be third, about three feet. Even on overhanging signs, the attempt is to keep signs within the sign bands. I'm just trying mm -hmm. to figure out. And the other thing is, is that the, the rule of thumb that's scientifically established is that for every 10 feet of distance to read the sign, ideal letter size is one inch. So if you had a, if your letters were six inches high, ideal reading distance would be 60 feet. A seven inch high letter, ideal distance reading is 70 feet. If you had, if you could make your letters, if you could make the letter six inches high and put marigold on either side, the attempt is obviously to try to keep the sign within the within or pretty close to the sign band itself. So it's not hanging down below into the glass block, blocking the glass block, block and the brick. Uh, one, of the, one of the criteria in the sign design guidelines is that that doesn't obscure any architectural details of the building. And for this building, the, the glass block, brick, I mean, that's all part of what's considered architectural detail. So if this sign could be held at least to from the bottom of this trim piece around the sign band, from the bottom of that to the top of the trim piece, you could probably get away with, you know, six, six to seven inch letters mm -hmm. and, and still be within the criteria for not blocking architectural details. So the piercing would have to be smaller, or whichever one is pointing. Piercing, piercing would have to be smaller, smaller, but again, the distance from there back to the parking garage is much shorter. Mm -hmm. So you could squeeze that in, you know, either a four or five inch letter, or four inch letter is readable from 40 feet. Right. Do you think that because it's offset from the building itself that it um, that it still blocks the architectural detail yes. as opposed to laying against it? And um, how would that contrast with what was existing there previously, like a large awning that blocked that whole area above the windows or the way awnings are throughout Main Street? I don't really remember. We don't have a picture of the way that was. We, we didn't, I don't remember, it didn't come before this group when I was on the, on the, the I board. The, I think the and village pizza was maybe an original tenant in the building. Mm, I don't know. Depends on where the outing, I don't remember the awning either. I don't remember where it was located or what it, what it blocked when it was open or closed. But again, it should have been, I mean, if there was an awning there, it should have been located so it didn't block the glass block or the sign band in any way. Okay, you can see the hardware right below the glass block um, along that, the if hardware it, still attached to the building where all the awning If it was, was. if the awning was located below, below the glass block, that might have been able to be approved depending on I see. color, design, compatibility. I, I think, you know, given the, the sight distances here, I don't know how many feet it is up to Main Street, because that's when, you know, people are going to be looking at it. You can see, I would reverse the tattoo of the piercing, but that's up to Well, actually, the tattoos on the other side facing State and Maine. Okay. So that has the least amount of letters. So you have six letters there. Um, but uh, I, I don't... Uh, I don't really have a problem with it hanging down like that. 
it's the only, it's interesting, it's the only uh, sign like that on that whole facade of the building. And that's because we're the only ones with an entrance, entrance there. Yeah. 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 And we've actually tried to even get our address changed, but because of E911 and different uh, regulations of being in a building with multiple units, we still have to list our address as 89 Main Street. So often we end up having to tell people we're across from 11 East State Street, uh, which is the place that's across from there. And so it's been sort of difficult to um, hmm. have some sort of marker at our, our doorway there. I, I see the need need for a, a sign that's pretty visible from that from that uh, for that location. The windows of the business are tinted, so even when people are walking by or driving by, they can't tell that we are an open business mm -hmm. because from standing outside it looks like there's no lights on. So to be able to have your lights on with your, over your sign yeah. is a major... Yep. And when yeah. people are driving by mm -hmm. trying to find us, there isn't a marker to show where we are yeah. or where they can park or where the entrance is. And because of an increase in security for the city center building, they've been changing the lock schedules for the front doors. So when people, our hours don't match that necessarily, and so when people will go to the front door at 89 Main Street and will often call and say, your door is locked. Oh. Um, and so we have to try to direct them around. And sure enough, they've parked actually where our side entrance is and walked around to the locked front door. Um, so That's going to be so frustrating. Your, does your address, when it says, you know, 89 Main and City Center, East State entrance? Um, we, we tell people that, absolutely, but when they do like a Google map search, it's the official registered address that's listed with 911 and such, and so um, an East State, um, you know, subtext or whatever wouldn't be able to be applied to that. Just a reminder that because you just have a quorum, all three of you have to agree for an official recommendation. Also, rather than, again, when I'm trying to keep the sign up above the glass block, because when you're looking down the street and see the sign, it's block, and I know it seems minuscule, but it blocks. I mean, it is a design part of the building, and again, according to the criteria, it's anything put up there is not supposed to block that. If an awning was below the glass block and just covering the brick, that's not as much of an issue. Is Would it be possible to both shrink the size of the sign and have it come maybe slightly above and below? So if this is three feet and you've got trim that's probably six inches on either side, so instead of going 56 inches, reduce the size of the sign maybe to 42, 46 inches, and then where on the bottom, the marigold is so small, you're not going to read that until you get right up to it. Right. Had you thought of doing tattoo, marigold, adornment? Uh, we had thought reading, about Reading that. on the sides, and that allows you to shrink the sign a little more. Right. But the, um, for us, the um, much like a barber pole is like an eye catcher for a barber shop, and it's not so much the name of the barber shop that is the eye catcher for the location. Mm -hmm. um, the simple vertical word tattoo is very sort of traditional in the industry um, and has been for you know 60 70 years and so what we did is applied our more modern font to that um, to try to to keep it with our um, sort of modern aesthetic but that was the association with it not necessarily the name of our business mm -hmm. but um, what the service that we provide and what people um, would be looking for to find our entrance if you even with that, with the marigold on the bottom written here, if you put this in small letters, marigold on the, just on the side, just again, center it, but headed on the side, marigold adornment. Again, I've been trying to figure out a way you can shrink the sign and, and, and you know, still have it readable. 
but the minimum. bracketing would have to be different then too, wouldn't it? Well, the bracketing is only going to be in the sign band anyway. You can't bracket it through the glass block, or the or you shouldn't be in the brick. So the bracketing would be within the sign band anyway. Okay, so instead of having the way they have it right now with the bracketing on the top and the bottom, it would still hang up. So again, you could make the sign so that it's you know what, up, what, up what above the trim slightly and maybe down to the bottom of the trim and still have it certainly readable from you know down on the corner what what are the regulations of how far a sign can project let me double check because i really see a need for you know pretty sign that is pretty large and and stands out in this location Mm -hmm. I certainly didn't feel that way about it. Uh, sorry. Rebel. Rebel. Rebel Razor. Yeah, uh, because but this is a place where people are going to, if they come to the front door, I think that's going to be a problem with you forever. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> we're sign. just hoping to lessen it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's something that they're going to, if they walk down the street, you, you want to be able to see it all the way from. Right. Main Street. Yeah. Uh, so sign and the support structure shall not project more than three feet from the wall of the building. Um, and you've got right now you had the bracket comes out 18 inches. It looks like. Yeah. Um, so the door, the sign itself would start like three inches from the building. If the sign width is 15 inches. No, actually, I think that's the here, 2 inches and then 14 inches to deal with the bracket. Because they had it a bracket top. The whole bracket is 18, so it's right. 2 inches, two inches on either the side, and then the sign itself yeah. is 14. Yeah, is what this says. Wide. And this was definitely a, the bracket top mm -hmm. and bottom. Make a sign that was twice as wide and mm. meet the projection requirement. But have to redesign the lettering. Yeah, but you could. Yeah, for us, the hope would was to um, maximize the size of the letters, and so having something that is uh, shorter but wider in order to uh, fit more letters on there would just make each letter considerably smaller. Um, in, in the long run, any indicator that we have on the side will hopefully be helpful, but um, you know, to not have to try to alter signs in the future and such, we're trying to maximize the size of the individual letters, which is partially also why we had tattoo facing the direction of uh, primary visual contact mm -hmm. uh, just because those letters would then be slightly bigger how important are these these uh, these bracket arms to the overall side aesthetic um <clears throat> the those bracket arms themselves aren't you know they're they're chosen to fit with the aesthetic the aesthetic doesn't you know necessarily match with the with the bracket arm so the there's other options available. Um, these are the ones that uh, John at Sign Design had suggested. What, so something that I'm thinking of is if you were to bracket further off the sign band and then maybe do something that does that. Mm -hmm. My only question with that is that I believe that the bracket provides some stability for the material because it's not like a thick wood carved right, sign. So have have sp some sort of spine that went down to you. Right, and then even over um, because of wind, I believe it's an aluminum based material, and I, I believe if the bracket doesn't go completely across on the bottom and the top, that it would uh, flex or bend. What, what about just uh, making the bracket extensions longer? Uh, so that the, the sign so itself sits out further from the building, oh. then it wouldn't really obscure the architectural okay. fi features. Yeah. That, that would be very easy to um, to adjust, and then also the the goosenecks on the lighting are available in every size and adjustable, yeah. so it would be able to compensate for that. But the bottom bracket would, as you'd have it designed, would go into the brick above the door. Is that correct. correct? 
So the other thing you could do for a bracket would be to have a bracket that mounts on the side of the sign like this. The bracket. Yeah, Actually, the bracket could go the, the whole length of the sign, and then the standards that mount to the wall could come out like this, so that, so that these mounts are within the sign band. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is if you wanted to, I would try to keep the bottom of the sign no lower than the bottom of the trim here. It's not, and it's just not going to work that way, Steve. Yeah, what do you think about that? You know, it, it so it bumps out further. Bumps out further than the brackets, the actual yeah. mounting so brackets go in the sign band, and then it it's yeah. floating and then, per se. And then the other thing you could raise the you could raise the sign up so that the the as you yeah. raise it, the only thing that the top is blocking is just this sort of monochrome area just and not the detail of the design as well. Yeah, um, would there be an issue then with the sign being raised up higher, the goosenecks will extend up higher than that sign mm. band for the lighting, whereas well, the way it is now... Well, what you can do is, does this, does this conduit extend out over beyond where the sign is? There's, there's two um, light boxes there, one evenly spaced on either side of the... Wait, but does the conduit go past? Does the conduit continue past that that no. second light? But it stops that it second stops light there. box. Yep. I think you could find you could find uh, lights that they might not be the goosenecks, but that would illuminate it. Uh, if you find if you if you raised it, moved it out, so that it's not, then it doesn't interfere with the architectural features either at the top top or the bottom. It means you could look behind it and see it continuously. Uh, I would be fine with that. Well, and getting it getting it lifted up a little bit will also, I think, having it more evenly spaced over the the um, sign band mm -hmm. might also make it look a little. Because right now, when you look at it, the, it looks a little funky because it it seems there's Strooby. like the the sort of air at the bottom because you're not even right. close enough to read the marigold. And the other thing is where this shows, where the artistic rendering shows us located, you have, if you only have these two boxes, you're only going to be able to illuminate the back side of the sign facing up East State Street. You'll have to move the sign back this way. I would move mm -hmm. the sign back this way and then have a light fixture here that washes the sign rather than a gooseneck. Or if you use a gooseneck, it should be set so that it washes the face of the sign so that the, all, all the lettering is, is readable. If you, and if again, you, if you raise the sign up, you have a better chance of doing that. Yeah, the, I mean, there is a, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a, a light, um, there's a conduit box on either side of the sign there. You, you're, you can see one, and then there's one evenly spaced on the other side. Oh, okay. You are going to get and a gooseneck so on either you're side. On either side. And yeah. the gooseneck design was to not cast light other than where it would be shining down on the sign, mm -hmm. um, so that it wouldn't be, um, you know, interfering with with pedestrians or drivers or anything like that. It was to focus the I light bet, just on the sign. I bet, I bet they can find a way to find a different gooseneck or something right. similar that will work on that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that they, however, the sign gets tweaked a little bit. It all still needs to fit in that six feet oh. per side. Um, I think, I think if you, you, can you, do it. you could move it so one of these fixtures was centered on the sign and then have a goose, two goosenecks come up and be very close to the sign and the light. Well, you've got two oh. You have two junction boxes. So right, but you could center the sign on one of them. Uh, yeah, but they wouldn't be centered over the door. Wouldn't that look a little bit? It'd be pretty close. I mean, it's, they're not very far this, off. It's hard to tell from the, because they're showing this projecting out. So this one, even though it's showing here, it's actually on the other side of the sign. Right. But I'd, so when you slide the sign, so you're... Well, the sign would be centered between the two boxes. It currently is. In the way yeah. it is. That right there is centered between yeah. the two. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like we're going to pull the sign away from the building. That's I would pull a sign away from the building, and if you would be willing to shrink it slightly, if you could get it down to, say, 48 inches, which isn't much. And what, what would... And then ra raise it so that it's not... I would raise it, and with your goosenecks coming around, washing down the sign, 
if you rate were to raise this so that you keep the bottom of the sign somewhere along the bottom of that trim piece. Earlier it was mentioned if we were to raise it up so that it extended evenly from the on the top and the bottom of the um, the trim that's there, the green trim, um, in the size that it is now. Um, is that what you were mentioning? I think Eric was talking about that yeah, my, too. My idea, if you move it away from the building, mm -hmm. then you you don't really have much interference with with the with the trim because you're going to have enough view space in between so that you're going to be able to see that. Now that's it's not as important on this building maybe as it is on some. But, uh, uh, and then were you saying lift it? Because I, I know you, you circled here on. Yes. So that we because lift it's, it it's, so it's just blocking this, this sort yeah. of cement up top, right? It's, it's less of, less Less Again, of architectural detail. It, it's less. It's obscuring less architectural details by removing by moving mm -hmm. it up. Mm -hmm. okay. And then again, the mounting brackets would be within the sign ban, mm -hmm. so that you're not drilling into the brick or glass or anything here. Trying to, you know, if you have a bracket down here, that now you're having to mount it inside the, you know, on the brick or the mortar joints in the brick. I would make the bracket so that it's a solid bracket on the side attached to two standards which attach to the building and then you can that can hold it out at any you know if, if uh, at any signs the you need need something at the top and the bottom to correct. stabilize it uh, I'm I don't know these custom fabricated brackets they're not uh, so I was uh, thinking it would be easy enough to drop an L so the, the fastening is all in the side band right. and it goes down and goes out right. at the bottom yeah. and the top you of should. your yeah. sign. So it sounds like top of sign aligns with the top of, of this molding, this red molding. I would or raise I, or higher. higher. I, 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 would, I would try to align the bottom of the sign with the bottom of the molding. I, I think the, I would say center the height of the sign on the sign band. So that was almost how we proposed it. Yeah. The center of the sign band, that the projection mm -hmm. above and below is the same. I'm good with that. What? I'm yeah, good I with mean, that. that's just, it's kind of balanced. And so what's our dimension off the sign band? 12 inches? It's 36 inches. No, I mean, for the overall, for, for the gap between the inside uh, of sign. I, I just, you know, I think. Right now it's two inches. Inside yeah, of I sign think it should, to I building. think it should be at least a foot. Okay. All right. And then the goosenecks. So now if you're here. proposing, if, if you were to leave it at 56 inches total, if the sign band is 36, and then between the trim piece and the glass block, you've got another 10 inches, so there's 46. So you, if you put 10 above and 10 below, there's your 56. Yeah, your gooseneck, you can get a different one that'll adjust. You gotta it. talk them into lighting up those glass blocks. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, if the wiring got put in. Yeah, I don't, I don't know whether it did or not. I just so the just to put all it together from um, all of you, the idea would be to take the existing height, raise it up so that's evenly spaced above and below that band, and then and, uh, and the have a relief of, of a foot space off of the building. Off the building, yeah. yeah. And then however you need to make your bracket to so accommodate. The, and the bracket would attach within the sign band. Yes. Yes. Okay. And that'll all be in a recommendation form. Okay. And it'll also be, that'll be then incorporated, and you'll get a copy of that with the actual administrative permit from the planning office. And then, um, do we have that um, drawn up again by sign design and resubmitted with your suggestions, or how does that? Um, I work? I think you can just do it with a recommendation sheet. Yeah, I, I, yeah. You don't need to come back here. Okay. Um, you know, it's on the recommendation sheet, and so if you know, as long as whatever you put up. It's too bad we with can't that. do neon. Yeah. yeah. We've had some internally lit LED that 
that's that's been cool. Mm-hmm. Like a like the box with the LED inside. Yeah, it's inside. kind of like a shadow box. Yeah, yeah, yeah shadow. Yeah, uh-huh. it's just, there's there's a it's kind of tweaky since internally illuminated signs are not. Yeah, allowed. but it's 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 a, it still hasn't been clearly defined. So yeah, no, I, I agree. It's we considered that for inside the window, sort of facing out the LED illumination, where you can change the front mm-hmm. board. Um, and your your letters are just painted on the sign. Um, they're uh, a vinyl, I believe. Oh, they provided project a, a little bit. No, it's... There was an example board. There was, yeah, it was submitted. There was a, a hard sample oh. of the sign itself, and... I don't, yeah, other than... It, I can run downstairs really quick and see if that's still there. It's the thickness of a paper. It's a vinyl oh, Okay, I, I just, uh... <coughs> was, I was thinking that if those letters, you know, were a quarter inch thick... That you get, might get some nice shadow lines mm-hmm. off here. No, nope, it's all right. it's all like flat. Um, yeah. But I don't. I looked in the packet and I didn't. The original application for whatever. I don't see it. Yeah, there was yeah, a sample. Yeah, I remember the, seeing it when you brought it in. The yeah. black and the and yellow the and then yeah. the material, sign material. Mm-hmm. Maybe I just missed. So it. what is the currently from here to here is 18 inches. What are you? What are we suggesting? Go to 12 inch gap between the building. So it adds and the back. an additional 10 inches total to get that 12 inch gap. Right. So assuming that it's two. Yeah. It's two is represented. Neat is the only thing on that side of yeah. the building that sticks out. I, I think it's going to show up. You know, yeah. I mean, you. I hope so. You can it, tell people to look for the sign on the side of the right. building. Right. I mean, people literally park right there at the door. Oh sure. Put money in the meter and then walk up to the corner because they've mapped. And then where tell you the door is locked. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. yeah. I would so. say once a week on average, at least, we have somebody that walks into our studio and looks out on East State Street and says, I parked right there. (laughs) Oh, well, and it's, I mean, that side of the building has been blank seeming for so long Mm -hmm. since Village Pizza left. Um, So it'll be neat to have something else show up there that sticks out from the building. One suggestion, if you do have, if you do have brackets here and here, to keep them within the sign band or and not maybe there but maybe somewhere you know down here and down here if you do a, a a bracket that sort of wraps the sign here somewhat and then these attached to that so you can get it within the sign band here and here one thing that might make it stand out even more is since you're, bl- you're black on white you have a letter with the yellowish color here is just around the perimeter of it, just do a black pen stripe, which will make the sign stand out even mm-hmm. more because you're getting additional contrast. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, so again, it just would be a like a frame thing. that went all the way around. Mm-hmm. It's, li- it's like there's a frame all the way around it. The right. gold will really wash out on the white. Yeah. yeah, we. it's the same yellow that we use on the sign that's on the front of the building. So we, we've we seen sort of how it doesn't contrast much but it works better than the gold foil does because mm-hmm. the way that reflects light, uh, that was the closest we could come to mimicking gold The only way visually. you do gold contrasting would do a bright, go, go shiny gold on a black background, right. and that would pop. Yep. But again, if you want to you know, stick with the black on white, again, I would cons- really strongly consider doing a black pinstripe around it, which will also match the mounting Brackets right. to the building. Yep. Again, from that distance, readability has as much to do with contrast as it has to do with the size of the letter. Right. Could Which is part of why we went with the basic, just white and black, but also um, reversing it, black 
with uh, like a gold lettering or something was much darker than our our general aesthetic is very bright and mm. uh, open and airy and so um, keeping it with our general aesthetic the other thing too is with the where in which the brackets mount within the sign band it'd be nice to have them symmetrical but also have them aligned to the to the one by material that's on this within the sign band mm -hmm. so you've got several one by six on yeah, that side so band. On. So it'd be nice to center those those mounting plates for the brackets within there. Centered on a one by you know right. I mean? Yes. Yep. I know it's ending up being a custom bracket, but Yeah, it should be easy as long as we measure the distance yep. between each one. So anyway, the recommendations, the sign would be evenly spaced above and below the existing sign band. The sign would be projected away from the building to achieve a 12-inch gap between the building and the edge of the sign. The mounting brackets will be mounted only within the sign band, and at your option, a black pinstripe can be added to the perimeter of the sign for additional contrast. That sounds good. And I think what he said centered on the... On the boards on within the, board, the centered on the boards, on the boards within the sign band on the sign band so you're not have a bracket. Mounting plates will be centered on sign band boards. Yeah. Can just so that can you show me on the picture um, just so sorry, that I understand? So you have the sign the band here, yes. I mean, but yeah, then yeah, also uh, within uh, each of these boards, boards wherever the, boards the, the, the bracket band. is put, make sure it's Doesn't centered matter. within oh, those go. boards. Just so that the bracket you. doesn't cross so over so into the another. Bracket, the brackets would be yeah, mounted like yes, here. So it's nice and neat. It's yeah, centered on these boards. Yes. Getting so, it so within the sign whatever, band wherever they put them is so it's not both an aesthetic as well as an architectural thing. Avoid putting new holes in the actual like masonry of the building, but then within the boards itself, centering it within those is more of an aesthetic. Right. Having things look uh, even. When and they actually it mod it, they so it's not they, taking up one board and then partially going into right. the next. I understand that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See what what they might want to do. I don't know what the structure is behind mm. that. But they might want to put like a vertical board. Oh, behind it. Behind For support. So it can be fastened in a number of places. Mm. And again, you can see, you know, look at that location and see what, you know, what's there. How are the boards attached, and what's what's yeah, what's I, backing it up? Right. I don't know. You what's know, is it that. like a you know three quarter inch plywood panel, or is it a? We can panel. ask John because he mounted our other signs you know, yeah. two years ago, yep. and uh, I'm sure he'll remember what he had to drill into. So, so again, that the only change is the mounting brackets are mounted to only within the sign band and centered we have on the okay. sign band boards. Okay. <laughs> Anything else to add or change or? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We've had some big sign things recently, so trying to you could have put up a great big tattoo make sure we follow <laughs> <laughs> yeah follow the we, regulations our, our aesthetic is definitely different than like um those kind of graphics and such you know it's very just modern and and clean and um even just that that font took us a very long <laughs> months to, to to decide on so yeah. well you want to get it right you want it to be readable and to look good Exactly. Yes. And to fit with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, because we do have a, a particular experience that's different than what people would imagine, and so it has to go with that. You want the artistry outside to reflect that that's inside. Right, <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll read through the criteria. Design review standards. A, preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style if the proposed project's in the historic district or involves an historic structure. Got it's it. in the district, so I'll call it acceptable. I wonder if... The building must have just not get 50 years yet. Or, <laughs> or 80 something. 80 C4. Fire yeah, was 86. Pretty, right? pretty, it's 40. Yeah. Not quite 50. Yeah, not Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping and proposed in this application. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, acceptable with a gooseneck. So the gooseneck's gonna be black to match the sign? Correct. Okay. 
I didn't. Was that on the proposal I think so, yeah. for black goosenecks? I think so. We requested black from John's. Yeah. I'll just make a clarification the gooseneck lighting is black. I think maybe you told me. <laughs> Number G, recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. Conformance with cityscape placement and design recommendations, acceptable. Compatibility with subject property and adjacent properties, acceptable. Shall not obscure significant architectural details close enough. Consistency and uniformity of multiple signs CB2 and OP, not applicable. Illumination, it's acceptable with the gooseneck lighting. Pendants and banners, not applicable. And individual letters painted or engraved directly on the building or structure are encouraged. In this location, the projecting sign is acceptable. All in favor with the other recommendations, raise your hand. could sign that one just above my name on the left there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. And then does that get mailed yeah. to us? So this will, yeah, and I mean, you're close enough that if you want, I can just have Audra send you an email when she's finished up the permit. You can pick it up yes, or we perfect. can email. Okay. Yeah, yes. you can pick Great. it up. Okay. Thank you so much. You're Thank welcome. you. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Thank I you. hope this helps. <laughs> I hope <Yeah>. so too. <laughs> Thank you. In 10 minutes. Do we have enough? Uh, nope, we don't have enough. So we can't do minutes. And you had something else you wanted to bring up? Yeah, just a uh, quick report. The uh, areas you could probably do it better than oh. I can, but uh, the Planning Commission has reviewed and made some changes uh, in uh, our recommendations. And the only one that really was we had much discussion about was. Uh, the, the one that uh, uh, asked that the uh, either the applicant or the development review board can request uh, testimony from the Oops. Historic Preservation Commission. Okay. Or design review. Uh, you know, historic Preservation Commission as to whether or not something is a historic Just, building. And, and that was, they crossed out that part of it and I said, I really want the Historic Preservation Commission to be able to be specifically authorized to provide testimony. Otherwise, we'd have to go in as individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the other thing we talked about? This is to close a, a loophole, essentially. You're trying to close a loophole. Yeah, oh. so that there's some way for the historic significance of buildings to be determined. It primarily deals with the demolition. Yeah. part of it. Um, Bob's it's still working on the demolition part. I had a discussion with him the other day. Yeah, it's, it's primarily a, a way to try and catch buildings that have historical significance for Montpelier but might not be officially listed on the national or state registers yet. Uh, where maybe they've been nominated but they haven't actually made the list yet. Um, I think that's one of the big, you know, Loopholes yeah, where somebody might then it, decide to try and demolish something yeah. but just because it hasn't officially made the list. Even um, though Montpelier has is the largest district in the state, it's sort of unmanageable that way. Yeah. Uh, and we can't do any add to it. We have to do new districts. But I would be willing to bet that only about half the eligible buildings in the city are actually listed on the register. 
So that's just a way that the Historic Preservation Commission can provide ex expert testimony on on that. That was most of the changes are. I wouldn't even call them procedure, but there's some, they had some good clarifications, uh, putting some things in kind of a more standard format and referencing other sections rather than putting them in there. I, I, it's, it, it's awful to read. <laughs> so, but the, the Planning Commission is going to have its first public hearing on next Monday, so the 28th on the design review regulations to start getting some public comment. It is not the official, you know, noticed for hearing for adoption. It's just the first public hearing to try and elicit we public we input on it before then maybe making some further changes based on public input before we took noticing a quick it for adoption. Look at the map, which was to me anyway confusing and kinda of hard to hard to read and yeah. and uh, I I wanna put uh, Cliff Street back in it again. Yeah. So yeah, they're making some minor changes to the design review district yeah. as the plan, yes. but that's going to be up for public discussion on Monday as well. So we'll see how that goes. That'll it's more. This is supposed to be more cleanup to make sure that if part of a zoning district neighborhood is in the design review district for equity purposes, to make sure the whole neighborhood is in that design review district. Or they took but out we'll some see. small pieces yep. that I I couldn't you know, figure out how significant that was. Yeah, some of them are tiny little bits. Um, so. But, so that happens on Monday night. And anybody that wants to attend, I'm going to be there. Uh, just to hear what. Yeah, I can circulate the, I have to finish cleaning up the draft design review regulations for that, but I'll circulate that along with the proposed map changes to design review hopefully tomorrow if if you want to go to another meeting yeah <laughs> <laughs> i think i'm going to be on six weeks in a row <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> any other business no we're doing here a motion to adjourn so moved <laughs>